welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. I make videos on career, education, and lifestyle. I'm so happy that you're here today because I'm going to go over what I did to go from non-technical to technical and what that journey was like and kind of give you five tips to anchor your thinking on this topic. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely stay tuned. Before we get into this video though, I do want to thank the people on the screen for giving me this video idea. If there's a video idea that you would like in the future, please comment below and if I make it, I will definitely give you a shout out. So I first want to go over exactly what that journey was like for me in going from non-technical to technical. A couple of you have messaged me and let me know that you're kind of freaked out by doing this. Uh, transition and you think that it will be hard. I can definitely relate to that because that's exactly how I was. In undergrad, I was a psychology major. The human experience was something that was just really interesting to me, particularly the human brain and psychology of it. So that's kind of what inspired me to study psychology. In doing my research of what I wanted to do with my psychology, Combining that with a technical background also really enticed me and I thought I could marry the two and be really competent in both. So I particularly really liked the field of data science and that's kind of what inspired me to pursue my analytics masters. But bridging that gap and turning my psychology background and adding some of the technical elements on top of it was challenging. And these are the five things that really helped me and I hope help you in your journey. I'm going to be specifically referencing the data space um, in this video, but you can also apply a similar idea to software engineering or UX design, whatever really you're interested. The first thing I really focused on was developing my conceptual understanding of the field of data science. And one way that was really useful is to read this book called Data Science for Business. You can see a picture of it here. It talked about different types of models you can build and also what a good model is. Essentially, it's just everything that you need to know in a crash course um, in terms of having a conceptual understanding of the general model building process. And that was hugely useful for me because it was in very simple language to understand. And especially since I didn't know much about the field, it was helpful for me to just even get oriented to the terms and the language and start building some of my, my technical, practical understanding on top of my conceptual knowledge. Now, if you're thinking this book is hard to get a hold of, there are similar books that you can find that talk you through the process of model building and just what you're even doing like and how to know if you're doing it well. So that was the first step for me. The second tip I have is practice makes perfect. After you have a conceptual understanding of what you're even trying to do, the next step is to put it to practice. And one of the ways I did that is through Kaggle. Kaggle is a website where you can get data sets for free essentially and I would use Kaggle for projects in school sometimes or even on my own to get data and then I would plug it into R because it's primarily what we used in our program and analyze it. The thing I really love about Kaggle and their public data sets is that there are people that have already usually worked on it so you can have their code as a reference to what you're doing. Now this is hugely important and useful, especially when you're a beginner, because there is a very high probability that you'll probably get stuck. And so it's really useful to be able to look at the code of other people when you're stuck and figure out how they solved it and then see how you can solve it. Just begin to understand the different ways that people might tackle a similar problem. I also did courses on DataCamp, particularly on SQL. There is this website called W3Schools that was really useful for me in understanding the different joins or different statements that you can use. I can tell you the coding part was really frustrating. Um, it's really hard when you haven't coded before to learn how to do it because it's just a 
different way of thinking than I was used to and it was really challenging for me, especially at the beginning. Um, I could tell you that like 75% or probably at most of my master's program, I wasn't really very good at coding to be honest, but I got better as you do when you keep practicing. And my first job, I definitely took some initiative in learning how to code better and I did a couple of projects and then my current job, I code a lot of the time now, so I've gotten more and more comfortable. I've really realized that it's not that hard the more you do it and it's okay to not be good at it first but definitely be patient because it's not something you just learn overnight. Even coders that have been doing it for literally decades still get stuck on problems and honestly a lot of it is just googling and <laughs> the more experienced coder you are the better you get at googling and that's something i'm also trying to master you just don't know something just google it because someone has solved it already i promise my third tip i have is to find a community you cannot do everything all by yourself in a vacuum you need other people and I really found this useful in my master's program it doesn't have to be a master's program it could be an online community that you find it could be anything anyone a friend who has similar interests just find someone or a group that is trying to do the same thing that you are because it will keep you motivated and if you run into issues you can bounce ideas off of each other and help each other trust me it's extremely useful <laughs> it was so useful for me uh, to actually be around people that were much better at coding than i was and could teach me not every great coder is a good teacher but if you find someone good it could be really helpful um, but to teach me just the general process of how to code how to read in data how to test your model how to build a model like how to practically do things um, if there is someone that you're doing it with or a group it can be hugely beneficial for your learning and then you can also keep each other motivated because the journey can be hard sometimes all right my fourth tip for you is to find complementaries now i studied psychology and so when i would analyze data i was actually really interested in people data and it was useful for me to have that frame of mind and to find that complementary because it was data about something I was interested in, it actually made my life easier. Because even if I was learning how to code and analyze the data, I could make sense of the data because I had conceptual understanding of what the data set is and what we're trying to accomplish with it. If you're into cars, Formula One racing, I recently got into Formula One racing. Uh, watching it on Netflix. It's really interesting to me. I didn't really know much about it before the Netflix show I've heard the Netflix show is really dramatized and not very accurate, but it's okay. It was entertaining nonetheless My point being if you're interested in Formula One racing for instance, you can find a data set about how different driver race right like and you can figure out the characteristics of what makes the perfect Formula One racer You can do so many things. It's on your interests so figure out what your interests are, combine that with this new thing that you're trying to learn and it will make it a little bit less scary to you. And also, say you're in an interview and people ask what projects you did, it's such a fun way to talk about what your interests are and also what the actual problem that you're trying to solve with it. My fifth tip is that it's just something else to learn. I know this sounds really simple, but it's just something else to learn. You were born, you learned how to walk, you learned how to talk, you learned how to write, you learned how to do laundry, which some of us didn't learn how to do till college. But you had to learn a lot of things to get to where you are. Similarly, it's just something else to learn, it has logical steps that you can follow, there's a way to do it, like speaking a language, you just have to learn the process, learn the syntax, learn how to do it. It's a simple mindset shift. Don't make it sound scary for yourself. You've learned a lot of things in your life and it's just one more thing that you are interested in learning. 
and grow again. So give yourself that space to fail when you have to fail. All right, that is it for today's video. I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for being here. Again, take a second to subscribe. I really appreciate it. That's it for today's video. Uh, stay tuned for more. Bye.